So with that, we've got a few minutes for questions. And uh, we can start in the back with Alan. Uh, thanks very much. I, I really enjoyed the session. I, I, again, I, I, I can't keep saying enough times. Really, all really good papers. I have a few comments for each of you. Uh, one is for uh, Padma. You uh, speculated that maybe your results would have implications for switching from a kind of bailout regime we had to the bail-in regime with orderly liquidation authority. I've got good news for you, and actually, I have a paper on exactly that topic, and it shows you are correct. <laughs> that uh, that uh, after Ola, the banks are behaving, the, the big banks are behaving better. They're holding more capital and they're t adjusting their capital more quickly. And if you send me an email or you can just check my SSRN page, there's a, there's a paper on that. For Stefan, I had a question for you. I, there's something I really did not understand. Why was it net states in and not gross states in that matters? To me, if I'm in Colorado, all that should matter to competition in Colorado is the number of states that are competing in Colorado, which is one plus the gross states in. So what do I care if the Colorado banks, why am I subtracting something if the Colorado banks are also competing in Nebraska? I, I just didn't get that. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll explain that. And for Yadoff, uh, two things. Uh, one is um, please drop your results on the um, on the past two 90 days, those are not pure numbers. The, the rule is that after 90 days past due, if, there's a, if the banks are going to pay back the money, you leave them in past due. If not, you put them in non-accrual. And so it's not, a pure, it's not a pure number. It's affected by the non-accrual. So I would drop that. And then when you showed the results for management, one or two versus more than two, the numbers were not that different, but the ones less than two, in other words, the well-managed banks were statistically significant. I'm going to suggest that's because there's, there's not many that are more than two, and so you probably just don't have enough test power. I mean, you can refute that, but just make, make, sure, you, make sure you check that. And then uh, for Mike, uh, I, I'm, I like that you say you want us to be using this confidential data. Can we get that? Can we get that? <laughs> I like to use confidential. I, I, I have used the Camels data, but only when I worked at the Federal Reserve. <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave it at that. OK, uh, thanks for your comments. Other questions or comments over here, here, and then there? Sandeep Srinivasan from Northeastern University. A uh, question to Stefan. Uh, I'm wondering if you find any results on economic growth, because the conventional wisdom is that the growth, there's a positive effect on growth. I'm wondering if you end up reversing it. So that'll be really interesting. Uh, over here, there was another comment or question. Yeah, I want to ask a question because I want to say thank you to Yana for coming and representing uh, all of us users and uh, bringing IU to the stage. But I do have a real question on top of that. So uh, in, in your research, did you find any place where it maybe would give indication that after the, the financial rules changed that banks actually did start doing lesser auditing? And so I, I wonder if it's possible that the rules changed, but for many other reasons, the banks actually continue to do the same forms of audits they had done in the past. And one of those might, by the way, be me, because my rules would be a little different than the fiducia rules for what we allow people to do with audits in Indiana. I don't know if, I don't if it's public or not, if you've been able to find that information any place. Let's see if we can take a couple more questions, and then I'll offer the panelists an opportunity to respond at the end. Yes? OK, so I have comments for all three. So first on Padma, following up with what Michael said, also within the Faria, there's lots of other things besides abolishing assistance agreements that could explain what was going on. The, the loss of the ability to do accounting forbearances was a big one, major league shifts in supervision. So there needs to be some thought to other mechanisms that might have been going on at that time. Um, for Stefan, uh, number of states sounds good. It may be better to look at like some way of waiting for closer banks and also states, I mean, California is a whole lot bigger than Wyoming. Um, so think about how to kind of capture those differences might be helpful. Um, Yadov, there's an old paper by the FDSC that showed that looking at troubled banks, um, examiners had a pretty darn big effect on, on differences in reporting, like the ALLL, for example, 
whereas the outside auditors had very little or none. And, and so you might want to give some thought, because I'm not sure how much to give. I mean, the, the implication of that research is that the outside auditors are nice, but the examiners are actually much more important. I think I also heard that from Craig. So just give some thought to that. If you need a paper site, let me know. OK. Uh, why don't we let the panelists, uh, if you'd like to respond to any of the comments or questions, please feel free. Uh, great. Uh, so I'd like to thank you all for your comments, Mike, Craig especially, um, as well as the questions from the audience. Um, yeah, so that's uh, both the opportunity and a challenge of our paper is that, that the switch happens in 2005. So we've uh, constantly wrestled with how to to appropriately capture the intended effect rather than the effect of the crisis. Uh, part of that was through that visual depiction that I talked to you about in which we just compare banks within the same state. We can try to make me even low, uh, maybe keep, uh, create a tighter geographic area rather than comparing within a state and maybe within an MSA. But uh, we'll take any and all suggestions on how to circumvent that crisis effect. Um, so, and with respect to Alan's comment with uh, the, the 90 days past due, it, we've already started to emphasize that, uh, that, that result anyway. And we've done some testing of significance. So actually just interacting a dummy variable for both the well-managed and non-well-managed. And those significant, those, those differences do load. So perhaps we can include those. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Um, so we can do that in the next draft. Uh, so Tom, we've also thought about voluntary audits a lot, and unfortunately the state of the art uh, in, in the literature is just to take all of these banks that are between this threshold as affected, and we tried to think about how um, we could get differences within this affected group, one of, way, one of which is to look at publicly traded banks within the sample that have different audit requirements. Um, we find very little um, you know, differences there as well. Uh, but uh, maybe I can talk to you offline about that. Get you back home if you want. I can share with you probably how many institutions in Indiana at least are doing something less than full external audit between 500 million and a billion. If that would help. Great. Yeah. yeah. And, and the last comment on the the differences between um, auditors and examiners. Uh, I don't I don't doubt that uh, examiners have much stronger power over the bank's operations than an auditor. Um, in this paper, we're just looking for something a little bit more subtle as to whether or not examiners uh, kind of examiners take the information produced by the other third party into their own work. And there is a lot of evidence to suggest that they might, given that they're time constrained and they have their own resource constraints in order to fulfill a mandate. And so this is not so much about auditor affecting bank and regulator affecting bank. We acknowledge that regulators have a strong influence on banks. It's just under these sort of, sort of constraints, uh, are, is supervision sensitive to other sorts of verifiable information that may be there out in the market? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, uh, thank you, Alan, uh, for the uh, reference. I'll definitely look that up. And uh, uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, so both comments relating to um, the possible alternative explanations to uh, these phenomena. Uh, so uh, what I'm really aiming to do in the analysis is to talk about whether, um, so while some of these cha other changes that we spoke about, like possible de-risking overall in the thrift industry, as well as FIREA, which I do mention in my paper because I wanted to be uh, mindful of all the other changes that were happening. Um, whether there is evidence of these changes also affecting institutions that have a higher probability of failure differently than institutions at a lower probability of failure, as well as um, how uh, their differential effects on stock and mutual thrifts. So that's something I'm, I'm working on establishing um, uh, further in the paper. But but that's that's definitely something I want to be mindful of, um, ensuring that what I'm identifying um, uh, is specific to this particular policy change that I'm talking about. So thank you for that. Um, thanks to everybody for, for your comments. Uh, Michael, thank you, I, I, I suppose, for comparing my paper to ulcers and bacteria. Um, <laughs> I um, don't know if that was, you know, if there's in a, a subtle, positive way. In a positive way, exactly. I'm not sure if there's a subtle message there, but um, 
it, hopefully there's not. Anyway, no, thank, thank you very much uh, to both you and Craig for your comments. I agree that our paper really doesn't have anything to say about welfare, and, uh, and we, we should try to uh, at least acknowledge the idea that there's a lot more to a bank than just the call reports. And uh, this is something that, that is absolutely true and that we need to, to improve. Um, Alan, we have actually done all of the analysis separating state 10 and states out just to sort of focus on gross state 10 and the same results hold. The thing is that they're very collinear. So uh, differencing them actually is very helpful to us because of that. So focusing on these one way streets as opposed to. Yeah. We, we okay. okay, well, uh, po <laughs> point, point taken. Um, uh, in terms of economic growth, great question. So this is our next paper. <laughs> um, and preliminary, res uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say anything that I might later regret, but, um, you know, it seems like it's consistent with your hypothesis. Um, and in terms of uh, how we weight things, we have looked at weighting uh, markets by sort of the, the size of the market, so you know, treating, giving California more weight. Um, we have looked at uh, weighting sort of by distance, so we're, we're sort of assigning more weight to closer states or banks, banks in closer states. Um, all the results go through in both cases, and the magnitudes are actually fairly similar, which is actually a little bit surprising to us. Um, but in any event, thank you again for your comments. So thank you to the three authors, especially thank you, Craig, for your uh, really enjoyable and insightful comments. Please join me in thanking the panelists. Thanks,